a woman who utters such depressing and disgusting sounds has no right to be anywhere. No right to live. Remember, you are a human being with a divine soul and the gift of articulate speech. That your native language is that of Milton and Shakespeare. And the Bible. And don't sit around crooning like a billion pigeon! <laughs> John! We see this creature with a curved stone English. The English that I keep in the gutter till the end of the days. Well, sir, in just three months, I could pass her off as a duchess at the ambassador to this garden party. I could even get to a shop, a place in the shop, or as late as me. What's that, you say? Yes, you squash, Captain Leaf. <laughs> you incarnate disgrace to the architecture of these columns. You insult to the human language. Yes. I could pass you off as the Queen of Shiva. Can you believe that? Of course I can. I am myself a student of Indian dialects. Are you? Do you know Colonel Pickering, author of written Sanskrit? I am Colonel Pickering. Who are you? Henry Higgins, author of the Universal Alphabet. I came from India to meet you. I was going to India to meet you. Where do you live? 27A Ripple Street. Come by and see me tomorrow. I'm at the cars. Come with me now and have a jar of some supper. Right you are. Excuse me? The motor bus? One more time. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Oh, do both now, me kind gentlemen. I'm short for me lodging. Sorry, I really haven't seen any change. Liar. You said you could change half a crown. You ought to be stuffed with nails, you ought! Take a whole blooming basket for sixpence! A reminder. Ow! Last. Hello. Oh, where are the two ladies over here? Oh, they walked to the bus where the rain stopped. Left me with a cab on my hands. Damnation. Never you mind, young man. I'm going home in a taxi. A taxi's made no object to me, Charlie. Here, what about the basket? Give it here. Mm. Top it's extra. No, I don't want nobody to see it. Goodbye, Freddy. Goodbye. Where can I take you? Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace? Yes, don't you know where it is? It's in the Green Park where the king lives. Goodbye, Freddy. Don't let me keep you standing there. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, what's all this stuff? And where is home? Angel Court, Drury Lane, next to Michael Jones' auto shop. Well, Judy, that sounds more like it. Ma'am, your basket. Thank you. How much? Didn't you read? It's a shilling. A shilling for two minutes? Two minutes or ten, it's all the same. I don't call it right. Well, have you ever been in a taxi before? Hundreds and thousands of times, young man. All right, Judy. Keep the shilling. With best of luck from all at home. Impotence. What's the matter? A young woman? What does she want? Well, she says we'll be glad to see her when you know what she's come about. She's quite a common girl, sir. Very common indeed. I should have sent her away, only I thought perhaps you wanted to talk into your machines. I hope I've not done wrong, sir, but really you see such queer people sometimes. You'll excuse me, I'm sure, sir. Uh, that's all right. 
Has she an interest in accent? Oh, something dreadful, sir, really. I don't know how you can take an interest in it. Let's have her up. Send her up, Mr. Fierce. Very well, sir. It's for you to say. This is rather a bit of luck. I'll show you how I make my records. We can sit and talk, you know, take it down first in Bell's visible speech, then in broad roaming. Then you put it down in the phonograph and you can turn her on and off as often as you like with the written transcript before you. This is the young woman, sir. This is the girl I dropped down last night. She's no use to me. I've got all the records I want of the Lisa Govlingo. I won't waste Melissa Lindor on it. Be off with you. I don't want you. Damn, you be so saucy. You ain't her what I come for, yet. Yeah? Did you tell him I come in a taxi? Nonsense, girl. What do you think a gentleman like Mr. Higgins cares what you came in? Oh, we're proud. He ain't above giving lessons, not him. I heard him say so. Well, I didn't come here to ask for any compliment, and if my money's not good enough, I can go elsewhere. Good enough for what? Good enough for you. Now, you know, don't you? I'm come to have lessons, I am. And to pay for them, too, make no mistake. What do you expect me to say to you? Well, if you was a gentleman, you might ask me to sit down, I think. Don't I tell you I'm bringing you business? Should we ask this baggage to sit down? Or shall we throw her out the window? Oh, I won't be called a baggage when I'm offered to pay like any lady. What is it that she wants? I want to become a lady in a flower shop and stay selling at the corner of Tottenham Court Road. But they won't take me unless I can talk more genteel. He said he could teach me. Willing I am, ready to pay him, not asking any favor. And he treats me as if I was dirt. How can you be such a foolish, ignorant young girl to think you could afford to pay Mr. Higgins? Why shouldn't I? I know what this is as well as you do, and I'm ready to pay. How much? Now, you're talking. I thought you'd come off it once you saw the chance of getting back a bit of what you chucked at me last night. You'd had a drop in, hadn't you? Sit down. Oh, if you're going to make a compliment of it. Sit down. Sit down, girl. Do as you told. Oh. May I take your coats? <coughs> and would you please sit down? Don't mind if I do. What's your name? Eliza Doolittle. Eliza Elizabeth, Betsy and Bess. They went to the woods to get a bird's nest. They found a nest with four eggs in it. They took one apiece and left three in it. <laughs> Don't be silly. You mustn't speak to a gentleman like that. Well, why won't he speak sensible to me? Come back to business. How much are you going to pay me? Oh, I know what's right. A lady friend of mine gets French lessons for 18 pence an hour from a real French gentleman. Well, since I know you wouldn't have the face to ask me the same to teach me my own language as you would for French, I won't give more than a shilling. Take it or leave it. You know, Pickering, if you consider a shilling, not as a simple shilling, but as a percentage of the girl's income. It works out to fully equivalent as 60 or 70 guineas for a millionaire. How so? Figure it out. Uh, a millionaire makes about 150 pounds a day. This girl makes half a crown. Who told you I only... Two-fifths of a millionaire's income is 60 pounds, and she offers to pay me two-fifths of her income. It's enormous, by George. It's the biggest offer I've ever had. 60 pounds? What are you talking about? Hold your tongue. Your money. <laughs> Somebody's going to touch you with a broomstick if you don't stop sniveling and sit down. Oh, anybody will think you was my father. I'll be worse than <laughs> two fathers to you if I decide to teach you. Here. What's this for? To wipe your nose. To wipe any part of your face that feels moist. <laughs> Remember, this is your sleeve, and this is your handkerchief. And don't mistake the one for the other if you wish to be a lady in a shop. It's no use talking to her like that, Mr. Higgins. She doesn't understand you. Besides, you're quite wrong. She doesn't do it that way at all. Yeah, you give me that handkerchief and give it to me, not to you. She's right, Mrs. Pierce. I think it must be regardless of property. Serve you right, Mr. Higgins. 
Again, so I'm interested. What's about the ambassador's garden party? I'll say you're the greatest teacher alive, you make that good. I'll bet you all of the expenses of the experiments that you can't do it. And I'll pay for the lessons myself. Oh, you're real good. Thank you, Captain. Almost irresistible. Is she so deliciously low? So horribly dirty. Certainly not going to turn her head with flattery, Higgins. Oh, don't say that, sir. There's more ways than one to turn a girl's head, and nobody does it better than Mr. Higgins. Though he may not always mean it. I do hope, sir, you won't encourage him to do anything foolish. What is life but a series of inspired follies? The difficulty is to find them to do. Never lose a chance. They don't come every day. Yes, I shall make a duchess out of this draggle-tailed gutter snipe. Oh! Yes, in six months. In three, she has a good ear and a quick tongue. I should take it anywhere and pass her off as anything. We should start today, right now, this moment. And take her away and clean her off and... Monkey brain if it doesn't come off. And, uh, is there a good fire in the kitchen? Yes, but... Well, then take off all of her clothes and burn them. Ring up Whitley or somebody for new ones. And wrap them in brown paper till they come. <laughs> you're no gentleman, you're not a dog of such things! I'm a good girl, I am, and I know what the likes of you are, I do! We want none of your loose and grove prudery here, lady. You ought to behave like a duchess. Now, take her away, Mrs. Pierce, and if she gives you trouble, wallop her. Ah! Oh, well, rather believe I will! I have no place to put her. Put her in the dustbin. Ah! Higgins, be reasonable. You must be reasonable, Mr. Higgins. Really, you must. You can't walk over a bit like this. I? Walk over everybody? My dear Mrs. Pierce. My dear Pickering, I never had the slightest intention of walking over anybody. I only suggest that we be kind with this girl and prepare her for her new station in life. If I came off any other way, it was because I did not wish to hurt her delicacy or yours. Well, did you ever hear anything like that, sir? Never, Mrs. Pierce, never. What's the matter? Well, the matter is, sir, that you can't take up a girl's if you're picking up a pebble on the beach. Why not? Oh, why not? But you don't know anything about her. What about her parents? She may be married. Gone. There, as the girl very clearly says, gone. <laughs> married indeed. Don't you know a woman of that class looks a worn-out drudge of 50 a year after she's married? They'd marry me. By George, Eliza, the streets would be strewn with men shooting themselves for your sake by the time I'm done with you. Nonsense, sir. You must talk like that to her. I'm going, he's all the chump here, no one no problem, he's teaching me. Oh, I'm mad, am I? Very well then, Mrs. Pierce. Don't order the new clothes. Throw her out. No, you got no right to touch me. See, now it comes to being saucy. This way, please. Yeah. I didn't want no clothes. I wouldn't have taken them. I could buy my own clothes. You're an ungrateful and wicked girl. This is my return for offering to take you in and dress you beautifully, and teach you to speak like a lady. Stop, Mr. Higgins. It's you that are wicked. Home to your parents, girl. Tell them to take better care of you. I ain't got no parents. They told me I was big enough to earn me own living and turn me out. Where's your mother? I ain't got no mother. They that turned me out was my sixth stepmother. But I always go without them, and I'm a good girl. I am. Very well, then. What is all this fuss about? She doesn't belong to anybody. Is of no use to anybody. But me. You can adopt her, Mrs. Pierce. I'm sure a daughter would be a great amusement to you. <laughs> now, no more fuss. Take her away. But what's become of her? Should we pay anything? Do be sensible, sir. Pay whatever's necessary. Put it in the housekeeping book. Although, I don't know what she would need money for. She'll have her food and her clothes. She'll only drink if you money. Oh, you are a brute! It's a lie! Nobody ever saw the sign of liquor on me! Oh, so you're a gentleman. Please don't let him speak to me like that. Does it occur to you, Higgins, that this girl has some feelings? I don't think so. <laughs> At least, none that we need bother about, have you, Eliza? <laughs> I've got me feelings, same as anyone else! See the difficulty? What's difficulty? 
Not just the pronunciation, that's easy enough. <laughs> but the grammar. I don't want to learn how to talk grammar. I want to learn how to talk like a lady in a flower shop. Will you please keep to the point, Mr. Higgins? I want to know in what terms the girls to be here. If she can be paid any wages, and what is to become of her after you've finished your teaching? What is to become of her if I leave her in the gutter? Tell me that, Mrs. Pierce. That's her own business, Mr. Higgins, not yours. Well, then we can put her back in the gutter when we're done with her, and then it'll be her own business again. Oh, you've no feeling, Adam. You don't care for nothing but yourself. Here, I've had enough of this. I'm going. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to. Have some chocolates, Eliza. How do I know what might be in them? Are oh, those girls being drugged by the likes of you? That's a good faith, Eliza. I eat one half, you eat the other. Up there. We shall have barrels of them. Boxes of them. We shall live on them, eh? I wouldn't have ate it on them too late. I'd take it out of my mouth. Listen, Lord.